Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here. My name is Scott Barnhart. I'm currently in India Indianapolis, Indiana, and I serve as special counsel of complex litigation for the Indiana Attorney General's Office. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dan Wong. I am a retired attorney and former judge. I'm also on the National Board of Directors for the Center for Civic Education. I live in Boise, Idaho, and I'm very happy to be here and to see you. My name is Myron Yoder. I'm the chairman of the Professional Standards and Practices Commission for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I'm a 37 year educator from the Alltown School District where I taught me the people. And glad to be a part of it still. And you all are? Hi, I'm Evelyn Napier. Here. I'm Trinity Lee. And I'm Declan Atkins. All right. Well, we have selected question number one. I will read it and give you time for your opening statement. In 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, never in history of this nation have so many people been arrested for the cause of freedom and human dignity. What lessons can be learned from the Children's March in Birmingham, Alabama? What is civic engagement? And what is its significance in American history? What responsibilities, if any, do schools have to promote civic engagement? You may begin. Mr. Chairman, the Children's March was instrumental in teaching the United States and those desiring social change the importance of nonviolent civil disobedience, civic engagement from a young age, and perseverance. During the 1963 Children's Crusade, civil rights leaders, including Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, Reverend Ralph Abernathy, and Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. all focused on nonviolent civil disobedience, even when faced with police dogs, hydro fire hoses, and billy clubs. However, by following the Gandhian tactic of filling the jails, the African families would suffer if all the parents were in prison. This led to a controversial decision to involve the children of Birmingham, which brought with criticism of placing children in harm's way as well as worldwide tension pictures of the brutality of the Birmingham police, led by its chief of police, Eugene Bull Connor. This demonstrated that even teenagers could address social injustices by being civically engaged. Perseverance was also an essential principle throughout the entire movement, and that day after day, the youth of Birmingham would suffer, would have continued to challenge status quo in order for their sacrifices to be meaningful. Furthermore, despite all the violence and hate that these activists received, people, even minors, were willing to step up and continue to fight for their freedoms. In this way, the Children's March became a turning point of fight for the rights of African Americans. Mr. Chairman, civic engagement involves working to make a difference in civic life through our community by developing a combination of skills and motivation to make a difference. This has been a critical element of our American political culture throughout our history. Since before we, before we were formally known as a nation, Americans influenced our future by becoming Minutemen to protect their ideals in the Revolutionary War. As Alexis de Tocqueville stated in Democracy in America, Americans joined in various ways to address issues in their community rather than waiting for the government to solve their problems. Throughout our history, when faced with crisis, we have seen countless examples of citizens banding together to fight everything from battles against totalitarianism in Europe to marching down Pennsylvania Avenue in 1913 to promote women's suffrage, as well as marching in Selma, Alabama in 1965, bringing attention to civil rights issues of voter registration, segregation, and violence against African Americans. Civic engagement has been seen during the current COVID-19 pandemic with Americans coming together to face obstacles and adversity, from current and retired doctors and nurses fighting together on the front lines in hospitals to those of us who are staying at home, social distancing to slow the spread of the virus. Mr. Chairman, because an engaged citizenry is instrumental in the success of a representative democracy, schools from preschool to graduate school have a responsibility to promote civic engagement in order to aid in creating informed citizens who can engage in civil discourse, deliberate effectively, and are committed to working towards the common good. Schools play a significant role in a student's understanding of what civic engagement is and the role students can play. A 2018 study by the Center of American Progress found that states that prioritize civic engagement in their schools have a higher percentage of civic, have a higher percentage of civic participation. However, only nine states in the District of Columbia require a full year of government and civic classes. 31 states require a semester and 10 states have no requirement. 
Research has shown that involving students in first-hand experiences leads to an increased civic participation as seen in programs such as Colorado's Judicially Speaking program, which exposes students to the thinking process used in most judicial settings. In addition, programs such as Mock Trial, Project Citizen, and We the People have shown both higher scores on standardized tests and a greater degree of student engagement and efficacy. So thank you, thank you for that. One of the questions that we've been kind of struggling with is what is the common good? And can the common good differ from state to state or country to country or region to region for that matter? I think that the common good is kind of a focus. It's almost an abstract thought. There's gonna be no definition of the common good because it's gonna change from society to society but it's a focus of wanting to improve the environment and require equal opportunity for everyone. And I think it will differ from country to country. I also think there's not really a set definition for it, but it really depends on each country's circumstance and each society and community circumstance because not everyone has as advanced as each other. So there are certain places is the common there may not be the common good in another place because they just haven't gotten to that place of advancement yet. So you mentioned during your four minute presentation that, uh, that Americans have come together to face the COVID-19 pandemic, but there are in fact protesters against the governor's stay at home orders. And I'm asking you, are these protesters acting in an appropriate or inappropriate civic engagement? Be specific. I think that while personally I do not agree with what they're protesting, they are being civically engaged in that they are trying to speak out and make a change within their government that they see fit. They might not necessarily agree that we need to stay home. And so by taking an approach of protesting, that is getting involved in the government and trying to make a change. Okay. I also think it is a um, an act of civic engagement because even if it might not be like the best idea for the community to just ignore social distancing rules and stuff, um, it's still important. And so, if like people have an opinion, like, they should have that like right and opportunity to still protest about it. Birmingham was kids hearing was the year that decided to step up into a park and run the risk of personal injury for something they believed in. You're of that age. What in your mind would put you on the streets, stepping into a park and run the same possible risk? Is there anything in there right now, civically, that you would engage in that way? Um, to me personally, I would probably get civically engaged in that way with um, the fight for equal rights for women, women with the ERA, and also reproductive rights. Any of the others? I think I also get involved in uh, protests or uh, acts of nonviolence engagement, and things like um, like right in like the ERA right now, as well as like. I'll choose as like a poor devil instead. I think those are the most important topics. I guess a woman, a lot of young women's days. Do any of you ever imagine you ever civil disobedience rising to the level of violence? Is violence ever justified to accomplish common good or change? I don't believe. Uh, violence is ever justified in a sense, but I think violence is sometimes inevitable as we've seen through several world, world wars. Uh, I'm not like condoning violence, but I think that sometimes it is inevitable and violence does come out of people in certain times through certain situations. I agree with my colleague. I would prefer people to take the route of a um, nonviolent act of protesting, but we can even see with the current protesters of the stay at home order that many of them carry guns with them. And while they're not actively using them, it is showing a act of potential violence breaking out because of how strongly they feel. So I do believe that at times it is inevitable that we have to sometimes have a violent ending. 
I'd like to take it back to the. I don't uh, think it's justified though. For... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't really think it's justified uh, for Vax to get involved in a community. I think it can obviously, but I don't think it would be justified because honestly, it doesn't really like get the movement anywhere. Uh, like when there were violent protests because of the King incident and things like that, like nothing really came out of that except a lot of people were. So, so I'd like to take it back to uh, the Children's March in Birmingham and, and kind of touch upon what role do the parents play in that? Were they acting in a civically virtuous manner? Um, were they by allowing their, their kids to participate or uh, were they exploiting their children in that process? Can you speak to that? I don't believe that the parents were exploiting their children in any way. I think they were looking out for the common good of their community because I think they realized that if they were to go protest and be put in the jails, because they were crowding the jails at that time, if they were to be put in the jails and their community would in turn fall apart. So I think that getting the kids involved from that young age and being involved in something that's important to their community would be beneficial to them in the long run. I agree. And I also think that the parents were, it was a very smart move on the movement to allow children to get involved because by allowing children, it got more media attention with the brutality that came with the children because people were even more upset that they were so far in their own mind that they would hurt children who were actively protesting an issue. All right. So I get a few comments for, for feedback. Um, certainly appreciated your uh, your presentations, and, and, and I particularly appreciated your your thoughtful response on a, you know the uh, the question uh, to the question of you know what would it take for you to participate in in being hosed or in, in vicious dogs and the like. So thank you for your answer on that. Um, I also appreciate you incorporating you know from a civic engagement standpoint things like this program and, and mock trial and Project Citizen. It's it's clear that you've done your research. So nicely done. I'll certainly echo that. In fact, I wanted to say, obviously, I, I, I've been involved in lots of uh, uh, mock trial, Project Citizen, We the People, and we're happy that you are, in fact, participating in this, and we hope to continue it, uh, even with our financial issues that come with this COVID-19 pandemic. I did enjoy your four-minute presentation, and I particularly liked your, your, your discussion regarding the importance of of schools and and um, having students participate in, in civic en engagement. I, if I had the opportunity, I would ask you more questions about what more can the schools do, but unfortunately we are limited by time. I did enjoy your presentation. I'm happy to see you and I'm happy to be able to uh, participate and listen to your knowledge. Thank you. I'd like to mirror as well. I thoroughly enjoyed your, your conversation with us. Um, I found it interesting. If I had a chance to take it a little bit further, I was trying to get you to the, the Declaration of Independence in 1776, protests that eventually led to a revolution. And you even brought up Minuteman at one part, the notion of the Minuteman at one point. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. You did a wonderful job. Uh, thanks to your teacher for organizing this and making it go. And to all those parents that might be hidden behind the computer or behind closed doors or listening through the door jab. Um, thank you for the support of your students. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. Very thank much. you.